Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with the series on JavaScript. And in this video, we'll talk about conditional statement. Now see, if you talk about the world of programming, if you talk about the world of computer, everything is based on data and the decisions we take based on that data, right? So when you say you want to take a decision, it's simply based on true or false. And we have talked about it, right? Uh, we have talked about the Boolean values, the true and false. And when you compare two values, it results in a Boolean value. Okay, so that makes sense, right? But then how can we use that Boolean value to take some decisions? Example, if you talk about a flow chart, if you talk about the flow of execution, it is based on the conditions. Example, if this condition is satisfied, I will go on this way. If this is false, I will go other way around. So this is possible with the help of conditional statement. So let's get started. Now, whenever you talk about this concept, uh, conditional statement, this is possible with the help of a concept called if else, okay? Okay, so there are other varieties as well. We'll talk about those things later. But as of now, let's focus on if and else. Now, how can we focus on that? So it's very simple. Let's take an example. And it doesn't matter which language you learn. If you want to learn if else, we normally go with simple examples. See, there is one reason why I'm sticking to very simple examples is because we are not here to learn complicated examples. We are here to learn a language, right? So it is easier to learn a language with easier examples. So let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we want to find a given number is even or odd, okay? That's the thing we do. Or maybe we can go with even simpler. So let's compare two values and we'll print the greater one just to keep it very simple. So what I will do is let me take two variables here. So I will say num1 is equal to and the value of num1 is let's say 6 and we got num2 and the value of num2 is 4. So we got two variables here. I want to compare these two values and print which is the greatest. Okay, so in this case, I know it is num1, but let's do that programmatically. So what we will do here is how will you compare them? It's very simple, right? We have done that before. So we'll simply say num1 is greater than num2, okay? And we can save this in a result. So we can say let result is equal to num1 is greater than num2. If this is true, of course, it will give you true because 6 is greater than 4 here in this case. Of course, 6 is always greater than 4, but in this case, a num is greater than num2. So that result is getting stored in a result variable. And then based on what's the value of a result, if it is true, I will print num1 is greater. Okay, it's very simple. So how do we do that? So we have to use a statement called if. Now, if is a statement, uh, basically you have to pass a parameter, which is result. So if result is true, that's how it works, okay? It works with true or false. So it will check if result is true, then execute a statement, okay? Uh, so I want to write a statement inside if condition. So let's give a space, let's give a tab, a proper indentation just to show that whatever I'm mentioning now is a part of if block. Not a compulsion, but a convention, good to follow. Okay, so if it is true, I will print uh, num1 is greater, simple stuff, right? Otherwise, it will not print anything. And at the end, I will print by. Okay, again, a semicolon is not compulsory, but it's a good habit to have semicolon. So what we'll do from now is, let's get this habit of putting semicolon. Now, if you watched the earlier videos, there was an intention of not putting semicolon just to show you there's no need to put semicolons in JavaScript. So it's optional. Now, if you're coming from other language, let's say C, C++, Java, it's compulsion to have a semicolon. JavaScript says it's your choice. So from now, let's, put semicolon, it's a good practice. Okay, and at the end we'll print by, that's it, okay? And now let's run this code and see what happens. So if you run this code, we can see we got num1 is greater and we also got by. Okay, so how this is working? So basically you got initial two values, it is checking for the results, so num1 is greater than num2, yes. Result is true, so it, of course, remember, it will give you a value which is boolean, which is true or false. And then we are checking if it is true, execute this statement. Okay, now let's do some twist. Let's say this is three. Now we are doing is three is less than four. So three is less than four. Now we are comparing the first value and the second value. Of course, this will be false because three is not greater than four. So result would be false. So if false, so what happens is if the value here is false, it will not get executed. So the block inside if will not get executed. Okay, so let's see what the output is. So if you can see the output is simply by. Now, why we got by? It's because it is outside if condition. This is outside the if block. So that's very important. Simple, right? So the if block, so this is the block here. If this will get executed only when, if this is true, okay? In fact, what you can also do is you can write, okay, we'll do that later. Uh, what if I want to print num2 is greater when num2 is greater? 
in this case num2 is not greater right or it is it is greater so i want to print num2 is greater in that case we can also apply if condition and we can check result so in this case we can again apply a if condition but that doesn't make sense right why to check two times we know if num1 is not greater it is num2 so in that case we can say else so else is another block here and here we are printing the num2 is greater simple and let's see if this works let's run this code and you can see we got num2 is greater see it doesn't matter what's the result the bar will get printed because it is outside the condition so these two statements are depend on the condition right so if it is true it will print the first block if it is false it will execute the second block so else will get executed only when the result is false okay makes sense right okay this is cool uh, but can we write this condition inside? See, ultimately, if only checks for true and false, right? So why to create a new variable and why to do those things? We can simply cut this part and put it here. So we can actually perform the operation or we can evaluate the expression inside the condition itself. That's what we're doing here. So we are solving this expression here, which will give you true or false. If it is true, it will execute the if block. If it is false, it will execute the else block. That makes sense. Let's go forward. Now, what if I have two statements here? Example, here I will say, uh, I want to print yay. Okay, so the moment you get num2 is greater, I also want to print yay. I know that doesn't make any sense, but let's say you have a thing where you want to execute multiple statements in the if block or else block. Will it work? Let's try. Now, if you can see, I'm following indentation here. So what is indentation is giving a space or a tab after in, in every block. Okay, it makes your code look good. Okay, so here, what I will do is I will rest on this code and you can see we got num2 is greater, yay, and by. Does, that makes sense, right? Because four is greater. But what if I will just make this six? Now, in this case, six is greater. So what it should print? It should print num1 is greater. That's it, it should not print yay, it should not print num2 is greater because that's a part of else block. Let's see if this behaves in the same way we are expecting. So if you run this code, oh, that's weird. If we got num1 is greater, that makes sense. But why we got yay? Yay should be a part of the else block, right? Now what is happening is, by default, every condition, let's say if or else, every block will have only one statement. Oh, that's tricky. That means else will also have this one statement. The yay part belongs to the, the outer block, not the else block. How do we put that into else block? So we have to mention, hey, both the statements belongs to else block. In that case, you can use curly brackets open and curly brackets close. So now what you are saying is this bunch of statements here belongs to else block. The same thing can be done for the if condition. And so that's the if block. So this is the if block and this is the else block. So the curly brackets is optional when you only have one statement. So if you have multiple statement, that's why you have to use uh, the curly brackets. Now let's try and you can see we got now it's greater. We don't have yay because that's a part of else block. Make sense? Cool. Uh, so that's how we can use if else uh, conditions. Now let me add a twist here. The twist is now instead of having two values, let's say we have three values. We have done that before. Okay, but let's do that. So we'll say num3 as well. So we got num3 is equal to let's say 7. And I want to check which of this or I want to find the greatest number of these three values. So when you want to compare these three values, what we will do here is we'll compare the first two values here, which is num1 and num2. And then we have to also compare the num1 with num3, right? That's where we will know that num1 is a greatest number. So basically here in this if condition, we, we will not just compare num1 and num2, let's also compare num1 and num3. But the thing is, when you have two conditions and we want both to be true, which logical operator we are going to use? So pause this video, in the comment section let me know which operator you think is logical, or logical operator, which is logical here. Okay, so I hope you are answered, let's go with the AND because we want both this expression to be true. So we'll say num1 is greater than num3. So we have to compare both. If that is the case, we'll print num1 is greater. That makes sense, right? Okay, but what if for the second condition? So let's say num1 is not greater. What next? Then we have to compare num2 if num2 is greater. But then do we, okay, how do we compare that? So in that case, we can use something called else if. Okay, so when you again want to compare after the first if condition, you have to use else if. 
and this is where you will put the condition. So what condition you have to put? You have to say num2 is greater than num1 and num2 is greater than num3. Cool. Now once you check that, so now if after this, of course we know that num2 is greater. So it will print num2 is greater. I don't want to print y anymore. It was just for the experiment. And once we do that, uh, what about num3? Because what if num3 is greater? So in that case, you have to put else block here where you will mention log num3 is greatest. In fact, it should be greatest, right? We are comparing multiple values. Okay, so that's how it works, right? So first we are comparing if num1 is greatest. Second, then we are comparing if num2 is greatest. See, if now we know that num1 and num2 both are not greatest, so of course it is num3. And that's why we are printing num3 is greatest here. Let's try if this works. Let's run this and you can see num3 is greatest. That is right. What if I make num2 as 9? In this case, num2 is greatest. What if I make num1 as 10? Num1 is greatest. So this works. Uh, there's one more thing I want to mention is when you have, so see, in the first if, we are checking if num1 is greatest, right? If this is false, that simply means num1 is not greatest. Then the only competition remains between num2 and num3. Then why to even compare num1 and num2 again? So the first condition is actually not required. We can directly compare num2 and num3. And then in the else block, we know it is num3. So that's how we can use if, else, if, else. So first we talked about if, then we talked about if, else, and then we talked about if, else, if, else. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section. And let me give you an assignment. The assignment is, you have to use if, else, of course, but then for a the given value, you have to find if the number is even or odd. Try that and answer that in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.